Greetings Python coders, Alan D. Moore here, author of this fine book, Python GUI Programming with TK Inter, from Pact Publications, available wherever fine books on GUI programming are sold. This is part eight of our TK Inter basic series, and actually part two of our little mini series on TTK. Today we're talking about the Tree View widget, which is a TTK uh, unique widget for displaying tables or hierarchies of information. So over here we have our diary application. I have not made any significant off-camera changes other than to delete the dummy uh, page that I added to our notebook last time. Uh, otherwise it's the same script. Let me go ahead and run it. As you can see there's our entry, diary entry right there. Okay, so today we're going to add a tree view. Now a tree view is, as I said, a widget for displaying rows of items that can be arranged in a hierarchy. So you can have a parent and then children and then children of those children and so on and so on. Today we're only going to look at it as a table. We're not going to do the hierarchical thing. Um, and what we're going to do with it today is we're going to have it show all of our previous diary entries. Okay, so we're going to add a little files table to this. Alright, so let me get over here into our code. We're going to scroll down here to where I've got it noted, files view. First thing we're going to do is create a frame for the notebook, so we'll call that files frame and give that a parent of notebook. Then notebook add files frame text is files. And we'll go ahead and underline the F so that we can switch to that using Alt F. Uh, next, I'm going to configure the grid layout here a little bit so that um, the tree view expands within this frame. And as you remember, we just do that with weight, files, frame, row configure, zero, weight equals one. All right. Uh, next up, let's create the tree view. So to do that, we just say file tree. We're going to call this file tree. TTK tree view and the parent is files frame and let's stick that to the grid file tree grid and we'll give it a sticky value of all sides yeah that'll work all right let's run that so over here on our second tab you see we have this gigantic white area it's blank if you look closely, there's this little gray button at the top that kind of changes color when I hover over it. We'll see what that is. So close out of that. So what, what that area is on the top is our header area. And right now we just have one column. It's a default column. We need to add some columns to display. So for these files, we're going to do three columns. Um, we're going to do, I'll make a little tuple here. We'll say name type and created put the created date okay now we're gonna make our file tree recognize these three columns as its columns All right. so to do that we pass it a columns argument ft dot columns and I'm gonna run that now you can see if you're looking closely at the top we actually have four columns they don't have anything written in them yet but we have four columns instead of one okay so the columns argument will create the columns but it hasn't labeled them yet so to do that we need to call a different method and that's going to be the heading method so what we would do is say file tree dot heading and we would give that a column ID 
and then pass in the text for the heading. Okay, since I've got three of those and I've already got them in a tuple, I'm just going to do this in a for loop. So I'm going to say for heading in FT columns, I'm going to say heading there and text equals heading. So what I've done here is I'm looping through that tuple. And for each one, I'm saying, hey, that column that I named name or type or created, set the text and the label to that thing. All right, let's see what that does. Okay, there you go. You can see now I've got headings, I've got labels. So I've got name, type, created. I still have this mysterious first column. So what is that? That is what we call the icon column. And it's there by default. And if I was doing a hierarchical table, this is where kind of the, the icon would be that I could click on and expand that next part of the hierarchy. Well, I don't want to do that today. Um, we're just doing a flat table. So I want to get rid of that column. So the way that I do that is I need to do another configuration setting, file tree.configure. And I want to say show headings. All right, so by saying show headings, I'm telling it only show the headings. Let's see what that does. All right, good. So now I've only got name, type, and created. Okay, so got my tree view set up. Next thing I need to do is put some data in it. In order to do that, we're going to need to write a function callback. So let's scoot down here. Oops under our functions. Let's define a new function. I'm going to call it populate tree view. Oops. And we'll give it an args here so it can eat up any arguments it gets passed. Doc string is look for text and secret files to populate the tree view. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is get my text files and my secret files. Okay, and I'm going to use the path library here. Get a path of the current directory, that's what that dot means. And then I'm going to use the rglob method. And that allows me to pass in a star, like a wildcard value here, so star.txt. And this function is going to return a generator with path objects for all the files that match that, um, that glob. All right, I'm going to do the same for secret dot and our glob star dot secret. So our two file types that this program works with. Okay, and actually I want a list. I don't want a generator. So I'm just going to quickly Turn that into a list. All right, now I'm going to iterate through that list. So for f in, and I'm just going to add those two lists together. That gives me one big list with all of the items in it. All right, so I want that created date. We're going to say created equals. So each of these is a path object and path has a method called stat that can give me various stats on these files. So let's say f.stat and then I believe what I want is uh, the m time. Okay. The modified time. Actually, there's C time too, but I don't think that'll give me what I want. So we're not going to use that. All right, so that returns a big, long, ugly number that re represents the number of seconds since like 1970, uh, which is called a timestamp. I'm going to use the date time library, which we've already got loaded, and say from timestamp on that, and then format it to a string. So string F time, we're going to say year, month, date. 
I won't worry about the actual time. Okay, so we've got our created, we've got our name, and we can get the type here. We're going to need to insert these into our tr file tree, all right? So we say file tree, and we call it insert method. All right, so this takes a number of arguments. First argument, since this is a hierarchical widget, the first argument is going to be the parent item. All right, and since we're not using the hierarchical feature, for all of these items, it's going to be a blank string, and that just means the root item. Okay, so our first argument for all these is going to be a blank string. Our second item is going to be where we want to insert it in the list, and we want it to be at the end. So we're going to use our friend tk.end. Okay, next I'm going to get into the keyword arguments, and I'm going to specify something called an IID. Now, what is an IID? So every row in this table is what's called an item. And every item has a string that uniquely identifies it. And so we can let those be auto-generated, but I prefer to specify in this case. So I'm going to specify an IID of the file's name. So we can get that from our path object f.name. All right, next, the keyword argument we're going to do is values. So we have defined three columns, name, type, and created, and I need to pass in a tuple with three values in that order. So for the name, I'm going to say f.stem, and stem is just the file name without the extension or without the path. For the type, I'm just going to use f.suffix, and that's just the file extension. And then for the created, I'm going to use that date string we generated. All right, let me fix these. Save that. And that's going to populate our tree view. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that when our program starts. And let's come over here. And you can see, there we go. We've got all of our files listed right there that we have in that directory. Okay, but that could change, right? If we save another file, we want that to be listed too. So let's come over here again and down in the bottom of our save function. We're going to say populate tree view. So whenever we save, it will populate our tree view. Let's try that out. Okay, there's our files. So let's try test eight. I don't know what test number we're on. It doesn't really matter. We'll say health, feeling healthy today. And we'll put a date stamp on that. All right, I'm gonna save this and we're gonna get an error. Watch this. Oh, yes. Okay, we've got an error. What does it say? It says item already exists. So here's what happened. Every item in that tree view has its unique IID generated from the file name. The next time that we call populate tree view after we save, those items are still there. We're trying to repopulate now from the same list of those same items plus the new one. What we have to do first, then, is we need to clear out the old items before we start repopulating. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, our file tree has a function, or tree view, I should say, has a function called getChildren, and that returns a list of all the item IDs, all the IIDs, for everything in the tree view. So let's get those. Get children. Okay, now that we have those, we can pass those into a function called delete. So we could say file tree dot delete. And we need to just send it a whole bunch of positional arguments. So we're just going to use the asterisk to unpack children. Now, in the event that there are no children, that will send a blank string or a null value into file tree.delete and it will try to delete the root widget and it won't be able to because that's not allowed.
So we need to check if there's anything in children. So let's just say in ch if, let's say if children, then we'll do the file tree delete. Okay, so like when we start the program the first time, it's going to be empty. There won't be any children, so it won't work. So we'll just filter out that possibility. All right, let's try it now. Okay. Let's do test nine, category work. Put a date stamp. Worked hard today. Save it. And now, there it is, work test nine. All right, cool. So at this point, you probably have two questions, maybe. And the first one is, we've got these nice little clickety things up here at the top. Can we make it sort if we click on those? And the answer to that question is yes. Yes, we can. And let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and I just want to say before I start in this, this solution came off of Stack Overflow. I will put a link to the post down in the description to give full credit. I didn't come up with this on my own. I did, however, change the names to make it a little more explicit as to actually how it works. Okay, so let's say we need a callback function here because those are buttons and they'll just need a callback. We're going to call this tree view sort column. All right, we'll say tree view call and reverse are the three arguments we're going to take. Sort a tree view column when clicked. Okay. So what do we need to do to make this happen? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to generate a list and that list is going to have tuples. Okay, we're going to call this data. And it's going to be a list. And each item in the list is going to be a tuple containing the value of the individual item that we're sorting on and the IID. And then we'll be able to sort this list and our IIDs will be sorted. Okay? So how do we get that value? It gets a little tricky. So the way we get that value is we call the tree view dot set method and we give it an IID and a column ID. Yes, I did say set. So kind of weird. We use the set method to retrieve the IID and the column. Okay, if I had a third argument here to set and gave it a value, it would actually set that particular column and that item to that value. But without that, it returns the current value. Okay, so that's going to be the first part of that. Now, we need to iterate this from a list of IIDs. How do we get IIDs from our tree view? We use the get children method once again. And I'm going to pass it a blank string just to tell it I want all the children of the root. All right, so just a review. We're getting all the IIDs oops, in. We're getting all the IIDs from the tree view. We're looping through them and we're building a list of tuples containing the value from the sorting column and the IID. Now that we have that, we can sort it. So let's sort and we'll say reverse equals reverse. So that's going to be that third argument to our function. It's going to be either true or false. If it's true, we sort in reverse. If it's false, we sort normally. You'll see what we'll do with that in a second. Okay, so now that we have a sorted list, we're going to iterate through it. But we're going to enumerate it so that we have an index sort val id in enumerate data. All right, so what's happening here is I'm enumerating that list of tuples and I'm getting back an index. That's what enumerate does. It gives me a number for each item. So that's index. And then here are the, the two values in each tuple, the sort value, right? The value that we're sorting on and the IID. So for each one, 
we're going to use the tree views method move and we're going to move that IID underneath this parent so the root to this index okay so the move function takes an IID right that item ID it takes a parent which for this flat table is always going to be an empty string and then it takes an index where we want to move it to all right and it moves that item to that index all right so to make this work we need to bind it to those column headings okay so outside the function here and back in the in the global namespace here i'm going to say for call in ft columns all right we're going to loop through our file tree columns again we're going to say file oops file tree that heading and we will say call all right that's the column id and we're going to give it a command so just like with a button we can give it a command in this case we're going to use a lambda function all right so i'm going to this is going to get long i'm going to move this to its own line that command will be lambda and we're going to say c equals call so we're passing in that column id value here we're going to say tree view sort column file tree is our tree view c is our column id and we're going to say false so that it sorts normally okay let's run that let's see if that works if I click on name, it sorts. Very good. When I click on them, you can see they're resorting. Okay, but what I'd like it to do is when I click on it a second time, I'd like it to sort the other way. So how do we do that? Okay, well, inside our function, we're going to do this again. Only we're going to call it on the tree view reference that we passed in we're going to say heading okay and we're going to say this column get my indentation fixed here and we're going to pass in a command and it's going to be a lambda again pass in the column id we're going to say tree view sort column tree view c not reverse. Okay, so what we did is we just replaced the callback on this one column header that we just clicked so that it's the opposite of whatever the reverse value was before. Let's try that out. Click it again. And there you go. You can see that every time we click it, it goes the other way. Okay, so I said that was probably one of the two questions you're asking. The other one you're probably asking, if we pull this up, you're probably looking at this list and say, hey, if we click on this, how do we get it to open up in our, in our entry form? Well, that's a topic we're going to cover a few videos from now um, when we talk about binds. And events okay it's a little more advanced we will get to that though but anyway that is the tree view widget of course there's always a lot more to this widget you can use it hierarchically but this should get you started it's still very useful like this hope you learned something today uh, in our next video we're going to be talking about some styling and beefing up the appearance of our application keep on coding guys and God bless